Hi folks, it's Switchback. Let's say you are out in the wilderness and you have to press that SOS button on your personal locator beacon or satellite messenger. Then what happens? Before we get into the at, let's answer the question, when should you press the SOS button? Well, if you're lost, like really lost, and if you are injured and can't get out safely, if you're sick and can't get out safely, if you have an injury that would lead to an infection by the time that you got out or by the time that search and rescue got to you, such as if a rescue is going to take a while. If you're stuck in a natural disaster such as a wildfire and you're unsure if it's even safe to proceed, or if you found that you are dangerously underprepared and can't get out safely. So now you've hit that SOS button, where does that signal go? The answer varies if you have a standalone personal locator beacon or PLB, or if you have a satellite messenger or satellite communicator such as a spot device, a Zolio device, or a Garmin inReach or inReach Mini. So let's first talk about what happens if you press that button on a PLB standalone unit. PLBs will communicate with the COSPAT SARSAT network, which is an international network of search and rescue satellites. So as a result of this, you do not have to pay for a subscription for these. From there, where that message goes depends on your location in the world. And frankly, they're too numerous to go into every single one of them in this video. With satellite communicators or satellite messengers, they each have their own network, but in short, they go to a satellite system, either Iridium Satellite Network or Global Star, to a central communication center that will alert the proper authorities based on the location and the circumstances. Depending on which device you have, you can get communication along the way as well, and you may get updates on where things are in your rescue or situation. If, say, you're lost and they're helping you find your way or they're helping you navigate your way out of a forest fire, they can continue to check in with you, or if search and rescue is on the way, then they can update you on the status. They can also check in with your loved ones that you have registered on your device. Whether or not you need to use an app in order to do this is going to depend on your device. So for example, with a spot device, you cannot communicate with search and rescue. You've hit that button and that's what you get. With a Zolio device, you are required to use an app if you want to communicate with search and rescue. With a Garmin inReach, you can communicate through the app or you can communicate on the device directly, which to me sounds like the safest option to count on if you were in that circumstance. Each of these devices will continue to send your location during your search and rescue or whatnot. Uh, how frequently it will send that signal is just going to depend on the brand, but if search and rescue is on their way to come find you, stay put unless you've been advised otherwise. What should you do while you're waiting for search and rescue and how much does it cost? Be aware that search and rescue may take hours or days to get to you. It is rarely an instant thing and so it's important that you have supplies with you to get you through some kind of some kind of situation like that. Again, stay put. If that's where they know that you are, then stay there. Put something brightly colored out where it's really visible, if at all possible. And if it's at night, try to put a headlamp on a flashing mode as high as you're able to get into a tree where they could find you at its base. Do what you can to stay dry and warm. Ration any food and water that you have. Keep your personal locator beacon on you and ready. And if you have a whistle with you, blow three short blasts and wait and listen for a response, yelling or a whistle. Now for the big question, how much does search and rescue cost? Ultimately, it's going to depend on where you are, the resources that were used in this situation, and your level of negligence. Laws vary by state, but in most states, they can decide whether or not they're gonna bill you. In most cases, they won't, but this certainly should not be relied upon. From what I could find online, rescues vary from hundreds of dollars to several thousand dollars. Certain states have memberships that will cover you if there is a search and rescue situation. There are other insurers or memberships, such as Global Rescue, Geos, the American Alpine Club, and several others. What device should you consider? Personally, I'm really a big fan of the Garmin InReach series, and I have a whole video right up here comparing their InReach Mini and their Explorer Plus. I really hope that this helps you if, God forbid, you were ever in a certain situation where 
you needed search and rescue resources. But thank God they're available for us and don't be afraid to use them if you absolutely need them. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Bye.